that's nice. What's up guys, it's RevJ. A while ago I had posted on my Instagram that I had found some old tools in the garage, and I figured it was time we finally took a look at them. So like I was saying, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I was going through everything in the garage, went ahead and dug this out from under one of my workbenches. And I've only done some real minor research, AKA typing some random things in eBay to see what we've got here. Let's see if any of it's worth saving, any of it's valuable at all, maybe any of it's worth restoring. And if it is, we'll go ahead and uh, take care of that in a new video. So first things first is what we got right on top here, a pair of old fashioned hand crank drilled. And by old fashioned, I simply mean not electric. Some people call these egg beater drills. Uh, they're not bitten brace drills. I mistakenly called them. Those are the crank ones that have uh, look like a car crank or a crank on your engine. Uh, these though, I'll understandably have the name egg beaters as you can see why. They're like the old fashioned egg beaters. You turn them and there'd be the little whisk beater in there. I've got a pair of them. One is definitely newer than the other one. Let's take a look at the slightly newer one first. So this one here is a Stanley Handyman, and uh, well, I can tell that because that's exactly what the sticker says on the front of it. It also is marked here, kind of on this little, I don't know, collet? I forget what you call that. Uh, and it does say Handy or Stanley Handyman H1214. Now I looked that number up and couldn't find a ton of information on it other than, well, at one point it was a hand crank drill. Uh, best guess based on the look of the wood, the type of paint, the materials, stuff like that is probably maybe from the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, if we take a look at the chuck, there's plenty of machine work and some knurling on that. Of course, we've got the little jaws there. Uh, the two gears here, this one, very tight. The movement is extremely sticky. I can't even do it while trying to hold it up close to the camera here. We've got what looks to be a cast gear. The teeth are all in pretty decent shape. The drive gear there as well. Uh, but the actual action there is extremely stiff. Uh, wouldn't be functional to drill anything. You probably couldn't even go a full revolution around. Uh, that's difficult. And it, there's a hang up point there too. A little better once we get around there all the way. Uh, we'll have to see if maybe we can take it apart and lubricate it. I'm not sure. I don't really know how these work. I've never taken one apart. Uh, and this is sort of just pressed in, this pin here. Let's take a look at the front. There's no screw or anything, so I'm not sure how that comes apart, if it does come apart, uh, to take a look at maybe adjusting the gears or anything like that. If we take a look at the front of the crank, again, it's got that Stanley Handyman sticker I talked about. Here's the little spin handle. Again, no screw or anything. It's just sort of pinned on there. Uh, the paint and everything on that is in quite good, as is the handle. Uh, not nearly as worn as you would assume if this thing ever saw much service time. My guess is this was bought to replace maybe the other older one that's in here, or as a spare in someone's toolbox. Never really saw much use. Aside from being sticky, it's really hard to get around, uh, it appears to be in pretty good mechanical shape. There's no missing teeth, there's no major scratches. Actually, like I said, considering uh, it doesn't look like it got much service time at all, this does adjust. A little teeth in there, as you can see. There we go. So, uh, yeah, that's that one. Um, I would think that, you know, these things had pretty much been phased out by the 70s or 80s, except you can still buy uh, versions of these hand crank drills. I don't think the H1214 is still available. Stanley does still sell wear parts on their website, although most of them appear pretty discontinued when I clicked through them. Now let's set this one to the side and take a look at the older one. This guy here, is a Pritzlaff, P-R-I-T-Z-L-A-F-F. -F. Uh, at first I couldn't identify it. Well, under some grime on the neck here, you can see uh, it's stamped right in there. It says Pritzlaff. That's the only indication of a brand or anything on this. There's no other hallmarks or stampings or anything other than that. So that's all I had to go off of. Um, but I did find a tiny bit of information on it. Well, they made these and some other stuff. That's really it. I claim to be no expert on old tools at all. As a matter of fact, aside from any old tools that happen to have made their way into my box, this is pretty much the first foray I've had into really messing with any of these things. So I don't know enough about it. If you guys are familiar with this brand or really these tools in general, go ahead and post in the comments below. Let me know what you guys know about these because I'm only going on the cursory information that I have and it is not much. 
So just by the looks, you guys can tell this thing is a bit older than the Stanley. The look of the wood, the look of the gear, the look of some of the machine work, everything does indicate that it's got a few more years on it than that Stanley Handyman did. You can take a look at the chuck on this one. Again, there is some machine work on it, although it's much, much flatter and a little rougher. Definitely more chewed up here. Looks like maybe at some point somebody put a vice grip on it. We've got our jaws here. Now these, unfortunately, they don't adjust perfectly. I'm probably gonna wanna take this apart and see if maybe there's something in there that this one's getting hung up on uh, because they don't retract and extend like they should. Uh, but I think that's probably fixable. Let's take a look at the crank on this one. Much thicker and heavier than the crank on the Stanley one. Uh, and of course it's painted right away. You do see that there's a screw on top. So this can come off and the crank can be removed. It's gonna make it a little easier to adjust or possibly service the gears and stuff from behind. Here is our crank handle. Uh, much, much different quality wood. It's a nicer wood. Looks like it's just got some varnish or some stain on it or something. Uh, and of course, a lot more years of hand use. As you can tell, it's sort of darkened and worn uh, in a few places. No screw on that one, but it looks like the pin can be removed. It's actually started to loosen a little bit. If you can see there over the years, although it's still held on, it still moves quite freely. The crank on this one, extremely smooth um works very well was a little sticky right when i pulled it out of the toolbox but i got two or three rotations around and it is much better still has a little little hang up spot in there that i'll have to take a look at i'm going to rotate it over here we'll look at the handle on the back again same kind of wood it's got clear signs of wear but it's holding up nicely it's not cracked or anything like that uh the sort of little collet base there that holds it on is definitely showing some rust as does the uh, sort of neck or the shaft that it's attached to back of the gear is extremely dirty. The gear on this one, again, definitely thicker, heavier. You can feel just holding the thing in your hand, uh, but the action, man, that is really smooth considering the age on it. The collet on this one doesn't have any stampings or any indication, like I said, just a little pin to hold it into place. The handle on this one though, well, unlike that Stanley that looks like it hasn't seen much use at all, this one clearly uh, spent a pretty good life of service. You can tell it's darkened and worn and looks like it's been clamped or gripped in a lot of different places. And it's got this nice fat head on the end uh, for your hand to rest on. I don't know if that's called a pommel, but I feel like calling it a pommel is appropriate. It's painted blue to match the gear uh, and the outsides of that one, just like an old baseball bat, worn all the way around from contact. Now, one of the cool things about this, probably my favorite thing about this, and I didn't even know right away until I was playing around with it, is that it's got a stash spot. Check this out. I'm a firm believer that everything should have a stash spot. And this one is no exception. That sort of pommel piece unscrews off wooden threading. The idea, of course, being you'd hold bits or something in there but that wooden threading is really cool. Uh, I'm sure that's not easy to do. I've only seen a little bit about woodworking. I would think the thinness of this material would make that pretty tricky. It'd be pretty easy to just crack this off. I know if I was doing it, I would. Of course, it's got the matching work on the inside here, and this goes together super, super, super smoothly. I'd be curious how smooth it was when it was first new, uh, because this has definitely been used more than a few times. Definitely gonna be older than our Stanley there. Of course, no stickers or epoxy paints or anything like that. Um, my guess probably on this would have to be sometime in the 50s, probably biasing on the earlier 50s. It could actually be even older. Uh, I mean, crank drills went back for a long, long, long time. Uh, I know Miller Falls is a company a lot of people know for these. When I was doing some research, that's a company that came up. Of course, a lot of those have much fancier inlaid cranks and they're balanced and yada, yada, yada. Uh, this is a much more workhorse variant, not nearly as fancy. And really, I couldn't find a ton of information on them. If you guys know something about these, like I said, please toss in the comments below. All right, guys, well, there's a ton more to look at, far more than we can put into one video, so we'll have to come back and revisit those next time. Do you guys have any experience with vintage tools like this, using these old uh, hand crank or egg beater drills, anything like that? Do you know more about Pritzloff or about these old Stanleys? If so, reach out on social media. I'll have that on the screen or leave it in the comments below. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you guys want to see anything else. I've got a couple more videos on the Hatred Copter C10, a little bit more on the Rebuild Everything Yukon, and a bunch more of these vintage tools. So please check back for those. Uh, and again, as always, thanks for watching, guys.